I am here today from Las Vegas, Nevada, where I call home. Uh, I work for a technology startup called Banjo. We specialize in real-time event detection. We're helping to power more than 1,000 media outlets around the globe. Uh, so I'll talk about Banjo in a second. But uh, my background is news editorial. Before I got to Banjo, 18 months ago, I was with CNN for 12 years, mostly in Atlanta, mostly on the news gathering side, heading up the uh, national desk in Atlanta. Uh, the last few years, I was mostly focused on our technology roadmaps and how that intersects with our journalistic pursuits and goals long term, year and a half to three years out, so managing those roadmaps. Uh, I am very proud to say that I have a strong association with RJI and serving as a fellow last year focused on wearable technology in newsrooms. So uh, that was certainly a blast and please come talk to me if you have any curiosity about what that journey is like. And like many of you I'm sure on the journalism side, uh, I'm a, a a uh, decent member when asked to do things, pretty reliable for the whole alphabet soup, online news associations, SBJ, Hispanic journalists, black journalists, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so that, that, that is, that is uh, in summary, a bit of my background, guys. Um, again, if you're not super familiar with Banjo, we, uh, we, we really specialize in situational awareness, helping power newsrooms to identify hotspots around the world, filtering information that is relevant to their audience, to their market, to their digital workflow. There's publishing tools integration for UGC, ways to connect through social rights, admin features. Uh, we run the gambit on how we help support and power media outlets. This is a, a recent uh, uh, case study from just a few weeks ago in New Orleans. They had a pretty nasty Mardi Gras parade accident. I think 23 people were injured, thankfully nobody, nobody killed. Uh, and Banjo detected through EMS alerts uh, fairly early on, uh, actually uh, 7.04 when police were dispatched local time, but we were already on top of a Facebook Live. You can't see that timestamp, but that's a couple minutes before 7 p.m. So our subscribers on the news front were alerted to this ongoing situation, receiving content from the witnesses on the ground. Uh, it's uh, really exciting stuff in terms of AI, geolocation, uh, image analysis, and so on. So this is uh, fourth time's the charm, I guess. Uh, thank you for having me, RJI. Uh, this, this is the last three years. I do sort of the summary close, bring it all together. Uh, and so as you've heard, uh, we did mobile the first year, and then we switched things up and went over to uh, engagement. And last year was collaboration. So uh, there, there's uh, been a lot of interesting memories, and I can't believe it's been four years. It's uh, been a wild ride. So like a good uh, stormtrooper, I mind my P's and Q's from uh, Commander General Flink over here. So th this is the mandate, right? To summarize, to help synthesize, to do some sense making around all of the different takeaways of which we've received the last uh, 36 hours or so. That actually should not be up there. Nobody freak out. I don't want anybody to get too worked up. There will be no, uh, uh, no vaporizing from the Death Star. So, so what do we pick up on? Um, we've been in this room locked up. Many of us haven't left except for bathroom breaks and some nourishment uh, for the past day and a half. Uh, and, and, you know, very intense, great debate, dialogue, uh, fascinating perspective ac across the spectrum. Um, and if it's one thing we probably all can agree on at, one, at, at this point is that th this conversation, this topic is complicated. Uh, there are no easy answers, and that is in part uh, a tip of the hat to uh, Jim and team for lining up this, this topic because it, it, there is a lot to pick apart. There's a lot of us that are interested in, in smart solutions and, and, and what's working and what's not so that we can move forward in some very smart ways. So if you're interested in what was discussed, um, I pulled this a couple of hours ago, um, so earlier today, and this is from TweetRoot. And this is uh, picking apart some of the, uh, the, the tweets, really, that have been shared through the RJI distribution hashtag. And you know the ones that you would expect to be larger, more prominent are. Uh, so that's terrific. Um, so that, that's a little bit about what's been mentioned um, in the room for the last day and a half. But I also think that it's interesting uh, on what wasn't touched upon, or maybe just somebody brushed up against it, but, but no one really went super deep on. Um, we, we, had, we had a little bit of the messaging app this morning from Alejandro, but 
I can't believe I'm shocked. Apple News, I, I didn't, I, and maybe I missed, but I, I've sort of been paying attention, taking notes, posting. Uh, no, no mention. And so the way news outlets, some of them in some very compelling, significant ways, uh, CNN, Bloomberg, Boston Globe, are utilizing Apple News as a significant driver uh, for referral traffic is impressive. Yet it didn't, it didn't come up in our talks. And I don't know if that was intentional or I just don't know if other things have our attention right now. We'll get to that in a slide or two. But um, you know, sort of, again, skimmed over the messaging apps. Uh, Ella yesterday mentioned Viber and Facebook. Uh, we had a brief mention today of WhatsApp, but um, no one mentioned Line that I, that I was aware of. There was some discussion in the uh, conversations about Twitter, but I didn't hear anything about Twitter cards. Certainly didn't hear anything about Periscope. Nobody mentioned moments. Maybe these aren't things anymore for your strategies. Um, Instagram stories, I heard Instagram quite a bit. Uh, SlideShare. I am fascinated. I go to SlideShare every couple of days. I see really creative things from brands and, and from individuals, frankly, that are um, advancing their own brands. And, uh, and so there's a, there's a compelling use case there to think about that as a distribution channel mechanism. Um, and then we've got some Star Wars references, which uh, I thought Jason was going to go there earlier today, but he couldn't get his video to work. So thankfully, uh, the, uh, the dark side is intact. So let's, before we go any further, let's acknowledge the Lego elephant, actually, that's not in the room, right? So it's not for effort in, in gesture and invitation. I know that Randy and Jim reached out to folks at Facebook and Snapchat. It sure would have been great if they were in the room, right? Because they really were at the forefront of so many of these discussions and you know, they play such an important role no matter which side of the equation you're on, technology, marketing, media, um, and certainly uh, at these big platforms. And so, you know, really would have been nice. I know there was a lot of effort made and hopefully those conversations will continue, um, you know, in the long haul. But, the, but the, it was sort of, we're hamstrung, right? If we're, if we're gonna be honest in that, and that's what uh, Stormtrooper Talk is all about, real talk. Um, I, I did want to uh, highlight one, um, we're going to come back to Emily in a, in a little bit, but Emily Bell, um, hopefully you're following her work, she, just astute mind, a terrific thought leader in the world of media. She's, of course, the director at the Tow Center, the Tow Center in, at Columbia, uh, and she had this to say in an important piece that she wrote last year on, on CJR, and that is, social media and platform companies took over what publishers couldn't have built even if they wanted to, right? And I was at CNN in the mid-2000s until a year and a half ago, and we looked at social networks. We, 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 you know, our parent company actually bought one that you've never heard of for an insane amount of money. Uh, Bebo, anybody heard of it? Eh, probably not. Yeah. Um, so, so we were thinking about what is the next Facebook? Where are people going? And, uh, and it turns out, um, even if we wanted to, it, it wouldn't have worked. This is really the role and, and sort of the, <clears throat> the uh, divine path that a lot of these tech titans were, were, were creating and needed to. So we'll come back to Emily in a few minutes, but um, I, I think this is actually the most important part of the summary here. I heard yesterday quite a bit, in, in even dovetailing into today, a lot of the what, what y'all are doing, right? And it, it, there's some very impressive numbers, page views, uh, likes, follows, engagement, Big Mac served. I mean, you guys are doing really cool things, um, but, but only a couple of times did I hear the why. Um, and it, you know, we may not know the answers to these things, or you may know them and just not be ready to share them, which is totally cool, that's the important part. But what I think is probably at, at, needs to be underscored is, and we, somebody mentioned it yesterday, ROI. Why are we doing these things? And in some of the talks that I heard, there was uh, the appearance of, there's really not a lot of pressure on our team to generate revenue. And uh, you know, I'm just gonna go out on a limb and say that probably won't last forever. At some point, the, uh, the, the bean counters, as they say, are going to come, come down the hallway, right? They're going to want to see what this investment is bringing us in. And if the answer is revenue-related, we'll get into that 
again for the fifth or sixth time. And the next slide, if it's simply brand exposure, visibility profile, we're creating the relationship and advancing that trust bond, then that's cool if you have the ability to measure that effectively. Um, but but, but I, I, would, I, I would just um, really embark on the need to, to, to really understand the, why are we doing these things. I, I love to experiment. I love to nerd out, try things. Let's see if it works. Learn from those mistakes. Let's iterate. Let's prototype some, some even better ideas down the road. But at some point, you, you've got you've to really come back with the right revenue pieces. And so it's important to understand not just the what, but the why we're doing these things, and maybe why we're not investing in some other areas. Um, already lots of great discussion on numbers and revenue and, the, and so many slices of the pie that have been ripped out that aren't left for media. This is actually from the study that, uh, the, the very recent study that Jason highlighted earlier today. So, so I've sort of condensed that down, but 14% available from revenue. And so between Dave's uh, talk and, and Jason this morning, so we, we, we realize that there's not a lot there. So if the why we're doing these things is to generate additional revenue, we'll have to double and triple check these things and make sure that we're making the right moves. These are, these are backed up by data and these are calculated decisions. There could be another possibility there. This is, talk about fresh content. This is, this is a piece from this morning, from DigiDay. I got it in my newsletter this morning. I said, aha, that's perfect. So uh, this is literally hours old. Um, my old pal Sam Barry at CNN, head of social and, and emerging tech, uh, was, was giving an interview to the folks at DigiDay, and she was talking about how they've been able to grow their, their uh, followers online, the messaging app quite popular in, in Asia. They've grown it to almost 5 million users in a year. And the, the uh, journalist asked Sam, are you doing this for the typical reasons that is to draw referral traffic back to the CNN digital properties? And her answer was, that's not it. It's actually more important for us to, to create these habits. We want to be everywhere news audiences are, regardless of platform. We, we want our exposure, we want our brand on every branch possible that they, that they might be at. And so rather than take the short-term gain of traffic, which I'm sure they're not going to turn down, they're actually committing to a longer haul, and that is to be in as many places as they possibly can. That's their goal with this particular initiative. And maybe that's the case for some of the things you're working on. So let's bring it back to what took place uh, the last day and a half here in the room. Some brilliant insights. I love the perspective. Lots of diverse ideas and directions. Um, and geez, Nicole started off, it, it feels like a week ago, right? <laughs> it, was, it was just literally um, hours ago. But um, nevertheless, w wow, what a way to, to kick the conversation in this event off and the, the compelling nature of her work and the drive that went into telling these important stories of the sarin gas attack in Syria. Uh, so, so wonderful kickoff. And uh, Trevor talked about, among other things, what, what's happening, the, the, the sort of Kickstarter idea to help out the city of Las Vegas and how that can be replicated in other cities around looking for IoT and smart solutions. Uh, so, so that was interesting. And he talked a bit about brand. And Ella beaming in all the way from Myanmar. Wonderful stuff. I, I, I loved her takes. And she talked a bit about audience mapping, among other things. And uh, Zara was wonderful uh, to tell a great story, tell it right for the, for the platform. It was interesting to uh, hear her talk about, very passionately, about the need to, to, to curtail content specific to different platforms, which I love, right? I always think of don't cross the streams. It's so lazy. This is so five years ago when you would, you know, multiple posts to like 10 different platforms and it would be the same content. So it would just be so redundant and it would be such a turnoff. I would immediately start unfollowing individuals or brands. Don't cross the streams, right? Who knows what 80s movie that's from? Thank you. Yeah, all right, good. All right, don't cross the streams. Um, and we heard a lot about data. So Carrie was terrific, uh, uh, among other things, in her short time uh, up here. She talked about the need to, to really pay attention to metrics. And so we heard that quite a bit. Uh, you, this is highlights from, from the others. 
I just thought it was fascinating to hear from the game design team, really interesting perspective, thinking about participatory spaces. Uh, hey, grab your surfboards, the tsunami's coming. So I think VR has been mentioned once or twice here in the last couple days. Um, Nathan from Yahoo, excellent, uh, good lessons learned. So that was a kind of a, a twist on, on the, the great success stories we've heard so much in the last day or so. Uh, the, we had the opposite end of that, and it was really important. Good, good fruit there to bear. Uh, Adam, wonderful on the Wall Street Journal discussion. Um, I, I love the phrase, uh, they're either uh, subscribers or not yet subscribers, right? That's the optimistic outlook. They're just not with us yet. Uh, and so distribution, learning to own. And of course, Tim with the three R's, reach, relevance, and revenue, right? That's what it's all about. Dave, again, we, you know, he threw more numbers at us. Uh, we all, at least uh, at this point, have a, a, a math degree, right, on us. If we did the math right, nobody checked mine. But, uh, but excellent perspective there, and so really great context we needed, and John was wonderful. I loved his story about his, his wife and the cooking lessons and what that could teach us about audience and, uh, and, and, and trust. And, um, so, so really good stuff there. Of course, uh, the team from Success talked about organic growth uh, and uh, some wonderful takeaways on that front. Um, Mr. Schieber on UGC, and uh, don't forget to get your pitches in, students, to, to him for, time cr for uh, tech crunch, excuse me, as well as uh, John t talked about uh, Medium. Uh, among other things, and so it was, it was uh, really interesting to hear how he uses Medium to extend uh, the, the, the stuff that he's working on and to reach new audiences, and he's working with other publishers so that he can showcase their content and brings in new readers both ways. Really good stuff, guys. You, you've got more highlights here, um, so we're just going to keep going through. We're going to blast through. I don't want to get too hung up. Great takeaways. The Stormtroopers approve wholeheartedly. Um, just a couple of uh, other highlights on what I thought stood out from our time together. There were some common themes that overlap between multiple talks, right? So uh, again, the, the platforms, they, they have so much control, right? They are in the driver's seat. And for media, those of us that we work in and have spent our careers in, in media environments. This is new. This is scary. We are used to being in the driver's seat. Uh, not only have we been bounced over to the passenger side, some might argue we're actually bound and gagged in the trunk. Um, so the fact is we, we've lost control on so much of the distribution and what's get, what gets bumped up in algorithms and feeds and you know what, what, are, what are the right formulas for success. Sometimes we, uh, we're flying blind on those things, it feels. Um, you know, there's so much push to go to where the audiences are online to intersect with where they happen to be. Uh, the question came up, I think, during a break yesterday. Well, where do you go to for your, you know, your, your news site, your homepage? And so for so many of us, we don't go anywhere, right? The news comes and finds us. We, you know, it knows where I hang out. I have feeds set up. I follow certain things. I have certain newsletters that come at certain times. I don't go seek the news, it comes and seeks me based on that personalization and customization that we've come, become so, uh, so nurtured with. Uh, we, we just heard from Connor here, so it's all about younger audiences. So much of the distributed game is around younger eyeballs and we're trying to crack the nut on reaching new audiences while we're at the same time sustaining the existing very important stuff. And we heard multiple occasions where, where data is helping to drive decisions. Excellent. We, we, you know, everything at my organization, both current and previous, you know, uh, data supports all the decisions we make. If we don't have metrics to support moving forward on some investment, time, money, resource, it's not happening. Um, right? And again, this probably has come up a couple of times, I think. Yeah. All right. So um, not to be the wet blanket. But, and you know, I will uh, look. I'm a I'm a nerd with this stuff. I don't leave home without this Rico Theta. All my kids, and I've got a bunch of them. They got they got VR headsets under the Christmas tree this year. I, I you know, I, I I'm I'm a fan. But I I just the journalist in me. I want to be skeptical on everything, right? So I love to you know just big picture context. 
I don't know that I'm, gonna, I'm ready to bet my monthly slot machine allowance that, um, that VR consumer sales are going to surpass cars and refrigerators and everything else in the next few years. Um, I think VR is still the thing that we hear a lot about, but we don't see a lot. Right? We're not walking in the hallways or in our neighborhoods and seeing people with headsets and bumping around. And that's not here yet. I love the idea of preparing for these things, playing with them, experimenting, figuring out where we fit in those environments, our content, our audience, and that relationship that will thrive, hopefully. I just think the, the hyperdrive on the hype machine is, is rocking, right? There's a reason why Best Buy recently announced that they are pulling the plug on hundreds of their Oculus Rift pop-up stores inside their big brick and mortar stores um, and replacing them with gaming, alien gaming machine pop-ups, right? Those um, tend to draw a lot of interaction and drive a lot of sales. The Oculus Rift has done a nosedive after the holiday season in terms of the sales. So I'm not saying this stuff isn't going anywhere. I'm just saying let's bring it back to why are we doing these things in addition to all of the experimentation. What is it going to get us? Um, I do love uh, a good 360 story, right? So if you haven't seen this one yet, this is fairly new. This is from a few weeks ago. This is the first VR story that NBC Boise did, KTVB. Look it up, please. Um, most of these stories for news don't work really well yet. This one was awesome. This Canadian goose that invades this poor woman's house outside of Boise and becomes her wingman. And uh, the photographer, reporter, and the operations manager shoot the story in a traditional broadcast way and then using the 360 gear. And you can feel the difference. It's noticeable. You go back to the legacy way, and it's, it's a boring, static approach to telling this this immersive, friendly story. Um, and so, you know, really, really check that out. For the first shot at, at trying something like this, it came out really nice. It's one of the better local news examples that I've seen, and uh, it's, it's been getting some good buzz in the last few weeks it's been out. I actually think that AR, VR works nicely as a complement. It augments the bigger story or the bigger initiative. Anybody here into the 24 reboot? I, I've been sucked in because it's Jack Bauer and I was hoping, yeah, Randy's with me. So, um, so, so after their first, uh, after the series premiere a couple of months ago, um, which sort of picks up mid-story in the middle of them trying to save the world, um, you are then asked to tune in with your VR gear um, or not, if you don't have it, and just go to the special website Fox partnered with Samsung to do like the prequel, the seven and a half minute terror raid, which kind of leads up to where the, the season kicks off, the new series kicks off. And that was nice, right? I wouldn't watch an episode using my headset, but a seven minute bonus content value add was kind of cool and it helped fill out the experience. Um, and I think that's a really good lesson for these early days of Again, m most people are being exposed to it. They're seeing it in commercials. They're hearing their friends talk about it. Maybe they play with it at the mall or at Best Buy. But people aren't running around with these things in droves, except for Sam Stewart. But um, you'll hear more from him in a few minutes. This is the Ricoh Theta. Sam's got the nice gear. For anyone that is interested in doing a VR 360, this is really good stuff for photos because it's small and cheap. It just, it's like the size of a remote control. Stick it in my bag or my backpack. Um, so this is really fun stuff to kind of entry level get you in for 300 bucks. Um, really easy to embed on websites, social media, and the, the power is that it does the stitching. You do zero editing, unless you want to. Um, but, but, but it's really sort of lightweight, user friendly versus the thousands of dollars that you might get into if you're buying a more higher end rig, um, which you'll hear more about shortly, but I just sort of wanted to provide this. This is me playing and over by the Bellagio Fountains one day before work. And uh, anyway, you can nerd out and play with these things and uh, this is some video. Uh, so anyway, it's, it's not, uh, you know, stitched together, of course, in this viewer, but if we had a viewer, then we would see that and move around and that sort of thing. So you can do different things. Um, 
I wanted to point out two other examples that haven't come up uh, in our time together, but I think they are worth noting. First of all, uh, when it comes to distributed content, I think Bleacher Report does a wonderful job. If anybody here has connections, used to work there or something, um, you have my, my kudos. Um, I, what they're doing is they're overlaying ownership into their distributed strategy, right? So, so they're moving to this content everywhere. So they've doubled their, their distributed team. They're up to 12 or 14 they've hired in the last few months. And they've now, they're in the process of assigning staff and a managing editor to each platform. And they have a separate mission for Snapchat and Instagram and Twitter and Facebook. So, we, you know, this is the nth degree to don't cross the streams. Now they are, you know, working with focus and emphasis and care and investment, short term, long term. So, so, they're, so they're doing really interesting things with high frequency, high caliber. They're doing special programs like this they do for NBA and the playoffs. So anyway, they're very active and doing some interesting things. Has anybody seen this new uh, uh, Washington Post uh, new announcement last couple of weeks? Yeah, this is, this is interesting. So smart branded content where they take, uh, they take uh, the larger branded content and they break it down into uh, little bite-sized chunks of the experience, infographics, the video, the text, um, maps. And based on the user, based on your cookies in your browser, if I normally like to click on an infographic, it's gonna show me that ad and draw me into the larger full story. And that's what they're doing. So their R&D team just launched this a few weeks ago and uh, they've been getting lots of buzz. This is back to Emily, guys. We're about to wrap it up. I recommend this piece, Facebook is eating the world. It's more than just Facebook, it's social, it's the tech titans. But her description of the four horsemen of the apocalypse Google, Facebook, Apple, and Amazon. She even suggests that Microsoft could be the fifth. And the important point, which I heard a couple times today, so that's good, is we don't have control. This is unregulated field. So take, for example, what Facebook's doing to prioritize video and then to further emphasize live video in their feed through that algorithm. We don't know when that changes again. As a content creator, producer, distributor, you're sort of riding that wave. And you hope that your contacts will provide the relationship back to give you a heads up and let you know when the next new priority comes along or through your analytics, you determine that on your own. But this is the part where it's really scary we're not in the driver's seat. There's a wealth of information thanks to the American Press Institute who held the summit on distributed content just a couple of months ago in December in Washington, DC. And then they have at this link here, some wonderful recommendations on how to shape strategy in these key areas. Nobody's got the perfect template playbook for nailing these things, scale, scope, what your mission is, what you're trying to accomplish. It's it, different from outlet to outlet, but there's some really nice best practices, suggestions, who's getting it right through uh, this piece on API. That's my information, gang. I think I'm over. I'm sorry, but there's so much good stuff this last day and a half. Thank you, guys. Thank you. I always appreciate your summaries, Victor.